Hello. Hello and welcome along again to um, my channel and uh, thanks for tuning in. And um, in keeping with the theme of this little mini series, I will be keeping fly tying very simple today. Um, I'll be tying another fly on with exactly the same materials as I did the last fly, with the exception of one material which I'll be adding today. So I hope you've been practicing and um, let's get to it. Okay, now I'm going to tie a fly as I said with exactly the same materials um, as I did the last time and um, with the exception of one new material and that's lead wire. Um, this is to add a little extra weight to the fly if you need to get down that little bit deeper. So this is one way of adding weight to the fly, so lead, lead wire I'll be using. Um, my pheasant tail, my hair's mask, which I have already prepared here, um, some wire in this case, sort of a goldy coloured wire, and um, my black tying thread. And again, I'll tie this fly on a size 10 hook because, as I've said earlier, it makes it easier for you to see. And not only that, it makes it easier to tie flies if you're just a beginner to tie them on a bigger size. So I'm going to start off as we did the last time. You just place the thread on the hook and hold it between your thumb and your index finger and just wrap it on. And we go back along creating a bed of thread. And we go back to leave the thread hanging just opposite where the barb would be located. Now the next thing is to put on the lead wire and that's a very simple process. Again you just hold it, index finger, press it down and you put it on in touching turns. Now Lead wire is very brittle and very easy to break, so you have to treat it gently. And when you put it on, you can break it just by shaking it like that. When you put it on, keep it to the middle of the hook shank. And in order to hold it in place, you can put a drop of super glue on it, or in what I do is I just wrap the thread around it a few times back and forth and that will hold it adequately in place and now I'm just building up just a little bit here behind it and there we are now the next material is my pheasant tail and I suggest if you're getting the pheasant tails that you get them with as long with the fibers as long as you can get them and um, usually from an older bird um, the younger birds, their feathers are not as developed, and you need to get them as long as possible. So this is from a relatively old bird, and I'm cutting out about maybe around a dozen fibres, as I did with the last fly. Now to create the tail, same procedure, roughly the same length as the body. So I measure it like that in my right hand, and then I just swap hands, and now I have the right length between my index finger and my thumb and just bring the thread over and then tighten down and there's our tail created now the next material is my gold wire and how I tie that in this time is I offer it up to the hook approximately the length of the body and again I just bring the wire over two or three turns just there lift the pheasant tail out of the way and then tie down the wire like that and back down here again and back up just to make everything secure now the next thing to do is to dub on some of the um, my hair's mask um, 
as I showed you in the last video it's a mixture of hairs from different parts of the hairs mask you have guard hairs and under fur and when they're blended together you get a really nice um, you get a really nice dubbing material and extremely effective I might add it appears that the combination of pheasant tail and um, the hairs mask is a, a sort of a magic formula if you like so anyway the dubbing procedure is as I explained the last time one direction only and what you try to create is you start off very with a very thin part here and gradually gradually adding more as you go back along sort of to create a sort of carrot shape because when you go to put it on it will then start back here very thin and will gradually increase in diameter as you go forward which is the natural shape of most nymphs so now there we go now we have a nice little rope put on there now wrapping this on in touching turns and as you see it's increasing in diameter as I go forward to create the classic shape of the nymph now the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie down I'm going to bring the pheasant tail over the back like this bring my thread over and tie it down now you see here that the um, the pheasant tail is creating a sort of shell back on this particular fly. Tying it in, make sure it's well secured. Now next thing, the wire. In open turns, over the back of the fly, and lift again and just here in front of the pheasant tail we tie it in. Four or five turns again to make sure it's held in place. Now I'm going to cut off the remaining wire. Now next thing here. Now I'm going to use the hair's mask again as a set of wood to create the thorax section of the fly. Uh, this here is the thorax section from here as far as the eye of the hook that's where the head and the thorax section of the fly are so now I'm going to put on another rope of dubbing and we're going to create the thorax now I'll hold my pheasant tail back out of the way so you can go back over the pheasant tail a little and then go for forward again now add a little more now and I'm running the thread through that which will reinforce it now the next thing bring your pheasant tail forward again two or three nice tight turns give it a little pull here and that will free the eye of the hook now I'm bringing the thread back over that again and I'm coming back here to if you like just behind the fly's neck to this point here and now I'm going to bring back my pheasant tail again and tie it down and this is where I will be finishing whip finishing the fly so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take trim off this waist here now you can do if you like leave some of this like for instance if you chop some of this out and it's, you can sort of represent the legs of a nymph if you want to leave it there some people do that so I leave them there for the time being so you can see them now what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip finish just behind the head here four turn whip finish and another four turn whip finish which 
makes it very secure. Trim off the thread. And now I'm going to cut the legs out. You can leave them there, as I said, if you like. And that's our nymph. And um, the mixture, as I say, of pheasant tail and hare's ear in company with the gold wire um, makes for a very, very successful fly. And what you notice also is as you catch more fish, the fly will become more bedraggled and chewed up and it becomes even more effective at that point. So that's the fly, simple, absolutely simple. When you get a little bit of practice and when you have a little bit of time tying under your belt, you'll be able to tie this fly in less than two minutes. And this fly will catch trout all the time, from one end of the season to the other. All you have to do is vary the size. And as you become more proficient in tying, you'll be able to reduce the size. So this is a 10, you can go 12, 14, 6, 14, 16, 18, and down to even size 20. But the most common size used, the one I catch most fish on, is a size 16. So that's it for today, and uh, the next time we'll be talking about floating flies. Thanks for watching. Agus gadi an cead o'r ele, slán